Hello, Astro friends. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you're watching from. I'm Tim Connolly, and I'm live from New York. To be more accurate, I'm in the Northern Adirondacks in the true upstate New York area. Today, we're going to unbox and set up the ZWO AM5 strain wave drive mount, which uses harmonic drive technology. I'm also gonna show the carbon fiber tripod and the two peer adapter options from ZWO. Towards the end of the show, I'll show the operation of the mount through the mobile ASI mount app and the ASI Air app live. I'm going to stop at the end of each section to answer any questions you may have. So please feel free to leave any questions or comments in the comment box at the bottom of the screen. So to start, let's unbox the mount. So I've been testing the original AM5 mount version since December of 2021. And this is a random production line version, which has the same features as the, as the AM5s that you see that are currently shipping out to all the customers across the world. So it's great to see these mounts finally getting out in the hands of customers. I've been using it for a while. It's been very reliable. Uh, I've had, been having a great time. And uh, unfortunately, the delays have just killed me as much as it's frustrated you. But trust me, it's very well worth the wait. I've absolutely fallen in love with this mount and prefer using this mount over other mounts I have. It should be mentioned the AM5 is a self-developed system by ZWO. This means they develop the system on their own and it allows ZWO to sort out any mount issues in a quick and efficient manner. Some noticeable differences from the test version to the full release version is the lack of the green laser installed on the front mount plate. I found this to be an awesome feature to get a rough polar alignment uh, so without the laser, I'm going to be planning on using my compass and sighting in polar north. Uh, you can also just point it towards the roughly polar north, or you could use the all sky alignment in the ASI Air app. And then uh, this will fine tune the polar alignment inside the ASI Air and the polar alignment feature. So since they got rid of the green laser, the front mount plate went to a solid, the laser plate went to a solid mount plate. There's a contest and there was a, a one of the winning selections, actually the winning selection was a child holding some uh, deep space design balloons graphic and it's etched on the front mount plate. I'll show you a picture up close of what it is. Although many, including me at the time, did not like the selection, after having it in my hand, I now find it to be a very nice graphic and the etching came out sharp and well-defined. So I went from not really liking this design uh, to, to appreciating it. It does add a nice touch to the mount. Also, the azimuth knobs have been upgraded. Before they were tiny, really fine knobs. They were very tough to use, especially with my large uh, sausage fingers. So there's uh, better grips on them and they're easier to fine adjust, uh, especially in the cold temperatures. The AM5 comes uh, packed nicely in a soft nylon, sturdy, durable, zippered case. It also comes with a nylon shoulder strap, adjustable shoulder strap. And also, I'm just going to show you. Let me just take the ASI Air off my scope.
there's a nice portable pouch uh, spot for the ASIR Plus to fit in. Also in the package is the ASI Air, or correction, the AM5 hand controller. And also there is a USB 2 cable and a two meter coiled cable for the hand controller to run the hand controller to the AS, a, AM5 mount. There's also a M6 and an M4 Allen key in here to make portable adjustments while on the fly and while out in the field. I'll show you, there's a really nice uh, quick start guide that comes with, with the mount. And it's uh, very descriptive about how to get set up and how to uh, use it out in the field. And also there's a test periodic error test report that's custom to each mount uh, that gets sent out. It's custom to each serial number. So you'll see the serial number uh, in the upper right corner. And there's also a scanner code, a QR code in the upper right corner where you can uh, scan it on your phone and go to the ZWO server and get the full report. You can download it, share it with your friends. Uh, it's a very nice feature that they have. And so before we get into the periodic air test report, are there any questions about what is included with the AM5? And let me just go to my phone to see if there's any questions up. Okay, so Bob, Bob Waterfield says tilt the case so we can see inside it. I'm not sure if that's better. I'll go to another view here. And see the hand controller fits nicely. There you go. So you can see it has the AM5, the ASIR Plus, the hand controller, and the coiled cable. And we can also fit the USB 2 cable right into it. However, I prefer to use the uh, hand controller with the Wi-Fi to connect to the ASIR Plus. And I'll show you a little bit more about that as well. All right, any other questions before we move on? Okay, I see Mike Gibbs, this is a great question because I've had mounts that did this. Uh, will the mount head dimple the dovetail bar on your scope? And the answer to that is no, it won't. And I'll show you exactly why. So as you can see, there's the saddle. It has uh, the pressures. Uh, so it, there's no knobs that dig into the side of your dovetail plate. And there's two sizes, the narrow Vixen and the wider Los Mandy uh, style dovetail bar uh, slot. So it will not mar up your dovetail plate. Okay, so it looks like the, another question here is, does the ASI air mount come standard on the side of the AM5 as shown? Uh, yes, it, it has the little foot on the side. That does come standard with it. And there's also a 12 volt, five amp DC output that we'll be talking about in a little bit as well.
All right, so let's move on to the periodic air test reports. The customized test reports, an important document that comes with the mount. Let's break the, down, the report down a little bit. ZWO decided to test every strain wave driver and provide a custom report for each mount. The strain wave driver factories do not give a report because of the high periodic air found naturally with strain wave drive mounts. They also usually will guarantee periodic air to be under 60 arc seconds. ZWO was the first and so far the only company to scrutinize the 60 arc second guarantee because this is very high and difficult to correct with guiding in astrophotography. So ZWO looks at this personalized report for each mount and ensures it is under plus or minus 20 arc seconds. The plus or minus 20 arc seconds and a maximum total of 40 arc seconds. Uh, so sometimes you'll notice some of the mounts that are out there that are shipping, you may get 36 total arc seconds. That's still very good and still will uh, do the job of astrophotography very well. And this is what sets ZWO above the standard for companies developing similar harmonic mounts and guarantees a quality AM5 that'll perform well out of the box with a guide accuracy of 0.5 to 0.8 arc seconds. Unlike other companies who may also claim plus or minus 20 arc seconds, ZWO actually proves this with the custom periodic air reports and the labeled serial number assigned to that mount. And the report provides a full periodic air chart. And I'll show you my uh, periodic air chart again. It's on the left side of the screen. Uh, and it goes out 360 degrees in 24 hours. A single cycle takes 432 seconds and a single periodic displacement angle is 1.8 degrees. When you view, view the zoomed in view of the chart, and I'll show you the zoomed in view here, ZWO takes the high to low periodic error in arc seconds and divides that by the duration in seconds from the low to high point. This gives the guide accuracy in arc seconds under perfect seeing and with one second guide exposure. I just want to reiterate too that this is basically the best the mount will perform. Uh, it's theoretical, uh, however, the lower the, uh, the accuracy number, the better your mount will perform. And it's also with the one second guide exposure. The reason ZWO uses the low to high duration is because this is the quickest change and it'll show the worst number. If ZWO measured high to low, it would be a longer duration and can show better guide results instead of a worst case scenario. So different strain wave drives have varying distances between the high point and the low point in a single cycle. The longer it takes to go from the high point to the low point, the more stable the strain wave driver is. Here's an example of various full periodic air charts. So here you can see four periodic air charts. They're totally different, different ranges, different maxes, different minimum, different behavior. St strain wave drive harmonic type mounts naturally have greater periodic air than warm gear mounts which can be as low as plus or minus five arc seconds. And here's an example of the uh, warm gear on a warm gear mount. But to me, the benefits of the strain wave driver uh, are they're portable, there's no counterweights, and there's no backlash. And I'll show you an example of the strain wave drive in action. So you can see as it turns, there's always contact and there's no backlash. So that is the benefit of the harmonic drive mount. So let's look at my periodic air test report and break it down to determine the best guide accuracy. So I'll bring my report back up again. This AM5 has a maximum periodic error of 14.1 arc seconds and a minimum periodic error of 6.7 arc seconds. Now let's look at the zoomed in view. This is the zoomed in view of the periodic error. 
Remember, the single displacement angle is 1.8 degrees, and the single cycle time is 432 seconds. So we can see from the chart by looking at the two low points, and I'll put that up on the screen for you. The first low point is at 242.9 degrees, and the second low point is at 244.7 degrees. When we subtract 244.7 by 242.9, we get 1.8 degrees, which is the displacement angle. All right, so now we see the low point to the high point is 216 seconds, or about half of that 432 second cycle. Now look at the maximum periodic error, and we see it's about 14.1 arc seconds. Right here, 14.1 arc seconds, as confirmed by the chart and the test. So now we take the periodic error of 14.1 arc seconds and divide it by the 216 second duration, and it gives a guide accuracy of 0.0652 arc seconds. And again, this is, un this is basically theoretical under perfect seeing without any atmospheric dis uh, distortion, and uh, this is the best the mount would uh, perform. So once you add the seeing and the atmosphere, you're, we're guaranteeing the mount between point zero point uh, five and zero point eight for the accuracy. But now, if you drop the guide exposure to zero point five seconds or half an exposure, this guide accuracy improves to zero point zero three two six arc seconds under perfect seeing. So I find this to be an excellent guide accuracy, and this is going to be a well-performing AM five mount. So again, I want to reiterate, remember, this is without taking into consideration the seeing, and it's theoretical. The lower the guide accuracy, the better the mount will perform. Lastly, as I mentioned previously or earlier in the show, uh, there's a, on the periodic error test report in the upper right corner, you can see there's a QR code. You can scan the code and access the online version to download, save, and share with your friends. And also, we have an article on the ZWO website. And the link is above in the title of this uh, post, the live show, uh, which has the 10 things you need to know about your custom AM5 periodic error test report and that's provided by ZWO. And there's some good information in it. And just in case, I know I'm going kind of quick with this and there's a, you can go back and reference and read it and understand it a little better. And so remember the guiding accuracy depends on the sky conditions and seeing. The calculated guide accuracy is in theory, the best the mount would achieve under the best of the best conditions. And it doesn't factor in the seeing. The guide accuracy will lead to nice guided images and round stars. And I'm going to put on the screen uh, this image. This is with my uh, my Celestron nine and a quarter SCT at a focal length of 1,645 millimeters. And you can see the total RMS is about 0.74 arc seconds with the RA as 0 0.61 and 0 0.42. So it's all right, it's performing well. And I have to say, this is my test mount. So this isn't the new uh, mount production mount that I just received. And I'm, uh, I'm curious to see how this new test mount will uh, compare to the test version. And I have a feeling it's gonna perform uh, very nicely. And here's another image of the stars just showing the nice uh, round stars that can be achieved at such a high focal length uh, with the AM5. And notice this is a zoomed in view too. So now I'm gonna stop here and take any questions about the test report before we move on.
Okay, so I see Carlos Flores. He's asking, so you're saying that you'll have to pull or align it manually. So what I do to pull or align the AM5, uh, before I was using the green laser. However, since they stopped putting that on the production versions uh, due to the international rules and regulations, uh, I, I'm just going to use my compass and I'm just going to point it to polar north. Uh, it's very simple as that. Um, you can also use the ASI Air app to uh, to fine tune the polar alignment. And there's also the altitude knobs and the uh, and the azimuth knobs, which I'll show you. And they're very smooth and very precise to adjust for to get an accurate polar alignment. So I hear it. See, Manuel's asking, can I use my CG4 tripod for the mount? even with the north spike on the tripod. So Manuel, I'm gonna talk about this in a little bit, but uh, since you brought it up now, I'm gonna talk about it now. I'm not sure which tripod you have on your um, CG4. Uh, this is my AVX tripod and you can notice, you notice I took off that uh, azimuth post and so I have a nice flat surface. So if you have the flat surface and you have a three eighths inch uh, center rod that comes up, that will fasten to the AM5. And I'll talk about that in a little bit with the uh, compatibility. Okay, and I see ZWO is asking if I can tell the weight of my telescope. Uh, I would estimate the so the the weight of my C uh, nine point two five with everything on it is approximately uh, thirty six pounds. So it is a heavy uh, scope, and that's with the, the uh, weights and everything on it just to balance the Z axis a little bit. Um, but it, the AM five handled the uh, handled it very nicely. I see Eric Watson. Hi, Eric. Since you've been using your Edge HD nine and a quarter with the AM5, what do you think the max payload it can handle? Will a heavier tripod be needed? So I, I didn't use the C nine and a quarter with the uh, carbon fiber tripod. And this was just because I was very cautious and I was worried that it would tip over uh, because obviously when you're at your extreme east or, or west uh, meridian, I just worry that it would tip. So I used the AVX uh, tripod and it handled it very nicely. And as far as the 11 inch SCT, I think it would work with short exposures or short guided exposures or with planetary, it will handle it very nicely. I've even had my Lunt 152 on the uh, AM5 for solar imaging, and it tracked the sun very nicely. And as you know, the uh, 152 from Lund is very heavy with that uh, hype, the hydrogen alpha etalon and the pressure tuner on it. So that is a heavier uh, rig. So Raminder is asking, can you polar align when the pole is obstructed or not visible from your, your site? With the ASI Air, yes, you can with the All Star or the All Sky polar alignment. What I would recommend and do is use a compass just to point it to the best uh, polar north as you can without looking, without sighting in Polaris, and also uh, just go to the the All uh, Sky polar alignment in the ASI Air, and it'll walk you right into an accurate polar alignment. All right, so that looks like that's all of the questions there. So let's move on. <clears throat> so looking at the mount, the mount has a clean, smooth look. And it weighs only 12.1 pounds or five and a half kilograms. 
I could easily put this in my backpack and hike with it, especially with the carbon fiber uh, tripod. The mount has a strong load capacity of 28 pounds or 13 kilograms without the counterweight bar and a weight of 44 pounds or 20 kilograms with the counterweight bar and the counterweight attached. So I just wanna to touch on that uh, counterweight bar a little bit. Um, so I saw some for sale right now on uh, AliExpress. However, I went down to the hardware store and I found a, a nice threaded rod and I made my own with a little bit, bit of, uh, bit of work, but uh, it came out nicely and it works. However, after having used the mount with and without the counterweight bar, I recommend not even using it. As long as your mount is secure and you have weights in the uh, weight bag uh, and you're cautious and you test the mount out, um, it, it'll be safe, especially if there's no wind, nothing to worry about uh, knocking it over. So with all my rigs, I don't even use the counterweight bar. And if you're on the fence or you're looking to buy the counterweight bar, I would try out the mount first before you spend the money to buy the counterweight bar. And as I said earlier in the show, this the saddle accepts both the, the skinny uh, Vixen style dovetail and also the wider uh, Los Mandy dovetail bars. So this makes it simple to swap out the scopes and without the need uh, to change things over or get adapters. And as previously asked, uh, somebody asked if it would mar up the uh, bar, count the uh, <clears throat> dovetail bar, and it's no. The answer is no. You can see how it's there's a nice pressure, uh, nice piece of surface area that just compresses onto the bar. So it does not mar up your dovetail at all. And as we mentioned too earlier, there's also a finder shoe on the side of the mount, which is a perfect spot to mount a green laser or the ASI Air. And I actually plan on using this side uh, mount for my solar imaging because I don't usually put my ASI Air on the solar scope. I usually have it hanging underneath the rig and uh, that way it's controlling from below. Uh, and you can see there's also a 12 volt, five amp DC output on the side of the mount. And we'll talk about that a little bit later about powering it. And while we're talking about the weight, uh, let's take a look at the tripod. I'm just gonna put the mount away for a minute. And here's the ZWO TC40 tripod. And it's incredibly lightweight and portable. And I'll show you what's inside the box, what it came with. It comes with uh, the standard tripod, the mount plate, which is inside. And you can take this right out. And it also came uh, with the weighted bag or sling. And also it came with three spikes uh, for stable setting. You can see that right now I have the rubber uh, grips on just so when I bring it inside I can put it on the wood floor uh, but the rubber uh, nice they're actually great shock absorbers uh, but you can replace those with the spikes and really drive it into the ground uh, for better stability and the carbon fiber tripods uh, obviously constructed with carbon fiber there's a nice uh, it's almost like a neoprene grip so when the weather's cold or you're out there cold imaging in the cold you can actually grab this and it's uh, nice and warm for uh, portability and moving it around. So it weighs in at about five pounds or two and a quarter kilograms and it holds, it folds up to a height of 20 inches or 508 millimeters. It's a perfect tripod for camping or putting in your hiking pack to bring it up to a mountain or up to a remote area or your, your uh, dark sky location. And the tripod itself is a, has a hefty 110 pounds or 50 kilogram load capacity. The tripod comes with the tripod, a weight bag, the sling, and the silver mount plate, which I already said. Uh, just remember to use the, 
uh, to use the weights on the uh, sling if you're using a heavier scope because you don't want it's so light that you don't want it to get top heavy and fall over. So ZWO offers two peer extension options. The first is a solid stackable uh, peer extension. And here you go, you can see it right in front of me. And here's my measuring tape. So each section, you're gonna have to use two of the stacked units for the uh, AM5 and the tripod, uh, just because the way it mounts and adapts to the tripod, two stackable sections are required. So the two sections are 5.5 uh, inches and about 14 centimeters, so 140 millimeters in length. And you can see you can stack them right on each other. That way your scope, when it's looking at zenith or you're taking your flats, you don't have to worry about it, the scope hitting the tripod. So the second option, which was just announced today on the ZWO site, and this is actually my favorite, is uh, what I'm calling the tri-peer extension. It's lighter, it has three bolts which come up from the base, and a lot of, you see a lot of peers actually with the three bolt construction, and it's actually very strong and stable. Uh, as I said before, it's lighter, um, and each bolt is actually uniquely fitted with a recessed bolt pattern so it snaps in to the top or the, on the bottom there's a recessed circle for added strength and durability uh, the recommended weight capacity of the tri pier is lighter than the solid pier and it's uh, recommended to uh, not put a scope on your am5 that's over 10 kilograms so 10 kilograms is the limit for the tri pier and the reason for the 10 kilogram capacity is due to the light weight and the extra height, which will make larger, heavier scopes unstable, and you're more prone to tipping the setup over. So I'm going to stop here and look for any questions you may have. So Terry asks, what is the max exposure this mount can handle? So I did, was doing one minute untracked, well, one minute tracking only unguided images um, with minimum star trails. However, you got to remember that these harmonic uh, strain wave drive mounts have very high periodic error. So you're going to want to guide it. And so with my three nanometer filters, I was guiding... Uh, with uh, 10 minute exposure, 600 seconds with no uh, issues. And then Harold, this is a great question. Does the AM5 need future maintenance, like adjustments of the gears? Uh, so I've been using this in extreme cold temperatures uh, back in December. I live in the Northern Adirondack, so it's common for us to hit uh, negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and so I've had this mount in the extreme cold. Um, obviously there's a temperature, uh, warning about that and the mount performed well for me, although it was, uh, ex exceeding ZWO's recommended temperatures. Um, as far as anything being serviced or maintained, uh, everything is internal, it's sealed. And so you're not going to have the exposed belts or the exposed uh, drive. So it's very minimal uh, maintenance on this. And David Schilling asks, how do you balance your scope? So I'll, this is, I was going to show later on, but I'm going to show this right now. Uh, to balance the scope, all I do is take a dowel, take a dowel, and I'll balance it. I'll try to find the center of gravity. So once I find that center of gravity, I put that right in the middle.
I put that right in the middle of the saddle. That way, I mean, you for a little scope like this, you really don't need to balance it at all. But I mean, I've been imaging for a while and it's good practice uh, to have it balanced. Although it's not required. And Diego's asking, so the counterweight bar is required to avoid tipping over, but not required by the strain wave drive itself to handle it properly. And Diego, that is correct. The counterweight bar and counterweight is only uh, required for, um, for basically just preventing it from tipping over. And I've had some large scopes. And if you're on the ASI mount page, uh, you can see I put Explore Scientific uh, 152 on it without, um, without the counterweight bar or a counterweight, and it handled it just fine. Um, but, of course, I wasn't using the carbon fiber tripod. I was using uh, the heavier-duty tripod. Uh, with the AM5 mounted to that. And Eric said, Eric's asking, speaking of the counterweight bar, what is the max counterweight you can put on that mount? So on the recommendation on the frequently asked questions, uh, there's a good uh, topic on that. And it's, I believe it's 11 pounds. Let me just see. Yeah, so you the max you want to use is about 11 pounds or 5 kilograms. And the counterweight uh, bar should be secured on the counterweight bar of no more than 25 centimeters in length. And that's on the ZWO AM5 mount frequently asked questions uh, where I pulled that from. And Tariq Abdullah says, hi all, is this live now? And yes, we're live from the Northern Adirondacks uh, just outside of Plattsburgh, New York. And the sun is setting here and uh, looks like there's some passing clouds overhead. And this video will be <clears throat> put on YouTube after uh, the live video. So you can always go back and uh, rewatch it. And Alejandro is asking, is it really so accurate in object tracking? And I, because the periodic air is very high, you're gonna want to guide. However, uh, I, if you look at my solar images where I was imaging uh, at a great focal length with my Daystar Quark, uh, because the Quark has a 4.2x Barlow, so I'm zoomed in at a high focal length on the sun, and I was locked onto the sun uh, without guiding. Uh, usually I do have the Hinode Solar Guider, however, uh, I didn't even use that. I just locked onto the sun without the Solar Guider, and it tracked very nicely, stayed on the active region uh, while I was imaging. So I, I would say it tracked pretty well. So when you're out there imaging the planets and you can adjust the, uh, the modes. So there's different tracking modes. And we'll talk about that once we get into the ASI mount app and the ASI air. So you can change the, uh, change the tracking speeds. And Al Alejandro also asks, is it so noisy? And the answer to that is no. Um, I use this out in the backyard and actually um, when I'm do when it's raining and I'm doing indoor tests on new firmware, new ASI air versions, testing it out. And it's about 10, 11 o'clock at night. My wife and my uh, seven year old son are sleeping in bed. I'm out in the living room with it. And it's actually very quiet. It's quieter than my Ioptron SEM70. It's quieter than my AVX mount. And um, there is a beep on it, but you can, uh, turn the, turn that the uh, beep off in the ASI Air app. So Ontario telescopes and accessories. That is a slick looking scope. And just to mention, I use the Gear 80. It's an 80 millimeter APO refractor, and I love it. It has a reducer on it that's adjustable, and it really fine tunes my uh, back focus. So thanks for that comment, Ontario telescopes. And again, that's the Starfield Optics Gear 80 that I'm using on it. And then Tariq with another question here. He asks, all harmonic mounts I see are stopping at about 18 to 20 kilograms. Why? Can I use my 10 inch RC scope with accessories on them? Tariq, I'll follow up with a question. How heavy is your uh, 10 inch RC scope? Um, 
And I'll, I'll go back to that question and we'll move on. And Jason Cousins, good evening, TJ. And good evening, Jason. Thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight here. I'm just glad the rain held off. Yesterday, it was a rainy day. And to this evening, uh, we are lucked out for this. So moving on. Okay, so Tariq said the scope is about 33 pounds alone. Just to give you a heads up, my C9 and a quarter is 32 pounds or 36 pounds, I'm sorry. Uh, so it is comparable to my nine and a quarter SCT with all the gear on it. Um, and the reducer on the SCT scope is pretty heavy. Um, okay, so let's move on to the next next portion. So let's install the AM5 to the tripod and the tri peer extension. And so the first step I'm going to do, I'm going to take out the legs, extend the legs out. And I have a chair out here. I don't like sitting down. I like to stand. Uh, but if I need to sit, I'll sit down for you or I'll lower the camera down. So let me just lower this down just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, this doesn't feel level here. There we go. One of the legs wasn't extended out. There we go. So you can see there's the weight bag here. And sometimes when I'm out imaging, I'll throw a, one of my counterweights just in the bag just to add a little bit of state extra stability. Although it's not needed with the, uh, the, the wider field refractors. So now we're gonna take the silver um, silver mount plate out. And you can see it's threaded on. So I'm gonna take all the uh, adapters off it. The spreader bar. And also the threaded rod. And you'll notice there's a long side on the threaded rod and a short thread on, or a sh short end on the threaded rod. You're always going to want to use the shorter end to go up into the peer adapter or the mount base. And so now we're going to attach this to the base of the tripod. Actually, the base of the AM5 mount. And to do that, I'm just going to get the AM5 out. And you can see there's three, uh, three screws. We're just going to take them out with the Allen key. Let me see if they... So here's a little better uh, angle for you. So there's the three screws. I'm just going to take them out real quick. There's one out. There's two out. And the third one out. So now we have the silver mount plate. We're gonna put this on. You can see there's three screws and there's a center threaded rod. So I'm gonna put this on the mount and then put those screws back on that I just took out. So this mount plate is only uh, included with the tripod. You won't see it with your uh, in your mount case if you don't order the tripod. And 
And there's a lock washer on it, so it's not going to come undone or loosen up on you. I'm hoping these clouds break tonight because I'm really excited to get this mount out underneath the stars tonight. So I really want to see how it uh, guides. I'll just give each screw a little extra twist. There we go. And so now I'm just going to put this over to the side. I'll bring the tripod back over. And now you'll notice the silver base on the bottom of the AM5 is actually the same design, same size as the bottom of the tripeer adapter. So this is really cool. So it just goes right on. And I'm going to be a little OCD on this. So I'm going to put the, uh, the three bolts that come up in line with the tripod uh, legs. So I'm just going to put that like that. And remember I said about the threaded rod here, you put the smaller end up. So you put the smaller, shorter end threaded rod uh, right up into it. And now we're going to put the the uh, plate, the the spreader plate. I'll just show you a little better angle on this. Okay, we're going to put the spreader plate under it. And now we're going to put the knob on. this better And this is my first time putting it on, so I'm just kind of just trying to look and see how it goes. There we go. So actually, let me see if this works. So with the AM5, we use the shorter end going up first. I just want to see if this will... Yeah, so I'm going to switch back over to the shorter end. Oh, that's why my tripod legs weren't all the way outwards, so the spreader wasn't going all the way up into it. So there it goes. So I spread the tripod legs a little more, and now it goes right on. So now I'm going to align the three, uh, three bolts with the tripod legs, and that's stable. So now there's a latching lock on the side. I'm just going to rotate that just to lock it, lock it down, and there you go. So now it's lightweight. And you can see that it's solid, it's not going anywhere. And I'm not gonna put the grass spikes on it. I have the rubber uh, feet, but just because I bring it into my house at the end of the night. Um, so it's very stable and durable. So now 
Let me just uh, pause here and see if there's any questions up to where we're at right now. Okay. So Mark Sellers, he's asking, good day, TJ, from Sydney, Australia. Does ZWO sell or come with the balance bar for the AM5? And right now it's not posted, but ZWO is planning on uh, producing and selling a counterweight bar and counterweight for the AM5. However, it's really, in my experience, depending on what scope you plan on putting it on, if you're using a rugged, uh, heavy-duty tripod, it's not needed. Uh, if you're using a lighter tripod, like the carbon fiber tripod, and you're exceeding their recommended uh, weight limit, I would recommend uh, using the uh, tri the counterweight bar and the counterweight on it. So, Bob, is there room in the case to leave the mount plate attached to the mount? And yes, there is. Um, and I'll show you that real quick. All right, so here you go. Here you can see the AM5s in the case. Tilt it over a little bit more. So the AM5 is in the case with the ASIR Plus, uh, the AM5 mount, and also the silver mount plate in place. So there's plenty of room in there, plenty of room to add some extra cables, your tools, the hex uh, wrench, and your hand controller and the hand controller cable. So it's a little windy here up in uh, the northern Adirondacks, so I have some papers blowing around. I'm just going to pick up real quick. There we go. All right, so let me put the AM5 back on the pier, and we'll continue from where we left off. And I see ZWO commenting that they are going to be releasing uh, the... They're going to be releasing the uh, counterweights and the counterweight bar. So Ontario Telescope and Accessories, is there a threaded hole in the bottom of the mount so it can be adapted to other peer tripod, other tripods or peers? And the answer to that is yes, there is. There's a three eighths of an inch threaded hole on the bottom. And I have the, the mount, silver mount plate on it right now, uh, but it, once I take these three screws off, there's a threaded hole in the bottom. And so that's how I attach it to uh, my, other, uh, my other tripods. So I'll uh, just put this on the flat platform of the AVX tripod or the smaller Ioptron uh, tripod. Right here, you can see there's uh, a flat bait, flat platform, and also a um, three eighths of an inch threaded rod coming up that'll adapt to the AM5 uh, mount. And you can see the other thing I like about this peer, the tri peer adapter, I can just grab it by one of the bolts and move it around very easily and lightly. So it actually makes it very handy. Uh, it will make it very handy moving it in and out uh, of the house for trans for portability. All right, so Andrew Hayes, this is a good question. Sorry, I think I may have already been answered, but does the mounting plate come with the a with the mount if I don't order the tripod? No, it only comes with the tripod um, because it's it sits in the center. Uh, however, if you're not planning on using the carbon fiber tripod, 
and you want to use another tripod that has a threaded rod, uh, it, it's a nice flat flush surface for it to mount onto your pier or your uh, other aftermarket tripod that you're going to use. So Lee Seegers, uh, how much side to side flex will that extension create when loaded with say a long refractor? If I tinker with the camera on the end while set up, will it throw off the polar alignment? So I'm not really understanding that question too much, Lee. If you could uh, ask it again, are you asking side to side flex from, uh, as long as you're using a stable tripod and you have weights uh, in the weight sling, it, this, uh, it's a very stable and uh, you shouldn't have flex. As long as you're setting it up stable, uh, very stable and um, not just like with the carbon fiber tripod and a long uh, refractor, then you'll, I can see some flex happening and it'll throw off the polar alignment. So Greg asks, I have a William Optics 1000 millimeter tri-mortar pier with an adapter plate that uses a 3 8 inch threaded bolt. That's what I'm going to be using with mine when I get it. And Tariq is asking, can you remote or control the mount without the ASI Air, say with a mobile uh, app or the tablet? And yes, you can. And I'm going to show you that uh, shortly. And Mike Gibbs, which Ioptron tripod is that? That is the uh, Skyguider Pro tripod. All right, so that's all the questions going down the line. So let's move on. So as I said earlier, the tripod has a black weight sling in the middle region and ensure you have adequate weight uh, so the scope and tripod do not trip over or tip over, uh, and this will make the mount a lot more stable. And this is very important, and I cannot stress this enough. I know there's going to be several users who will underestimate this. Uh, I see it all the time with people using their wheelie bars and rolling their scope uh, scopes out down the driveway, and their uh, scope topples over. Um, it's I think as people start using this, because this is uh, new technology at a, a lower cost. So it's going to be, there's a strong demand for it. So I see accidents happening. So I just want to make sure everybody's aware. Don't estimate, est underestimate this weight and make sure that you're using a stable tripod. You're using weights, anchoring it down. Um, even a strong gust of wind, if you're extreme to the uh, Western Meridian or Eastern Meridian, it could topple your mount right over. Okay. So as I said earlier, and I'm just going to go over this again. Let me just tighten the AM5 down. So on the trip here, there's three little uh, levers. You can tw turn them clockwise and it'll lock the mount right down onto the trip here. So now we're totally stable and it's lightweight and it's portable. So on the bottom end here, you can see the threaded cap. This threaded cap you can take out and there's that M12 by 1.75 uh, coarse thread uh, screw hole. So I'm gonna just grab my homemade counterweight bar. Just gonna undo the bolt on top. And you can see I, I have it, it's homemade. It has a bunch of spacers on it. It works perfect for what I wanna do as a counterweight. You just put it right in. and it threads right in and you just tighten it down and it's not going to go anywhere. So now I use my Celestron uh, 11 pound counterweight and I'll actually put that right on the end here. And like I said before, it balance doesn't affect these mounts. So you're just using the extra weight to balance for a heavier scope, which I have found is not needed with these as long as the tripod is secure and it's not going to tip over. And you can see it's my count homemade counterweight bar is just a threaded rod.
So I'm going to put replace the cap back on here. <clears throat> now we'll move on. And so as I mentioned, the counterweight bar and the counterweight are only meant for better stabilization to keep a heavy scope from falling over. And if you do decide to go on AliExpress or you don't want to wait for ZWO to release their uh, counterweight bar, um, it's a M12 uh, with a 1.75 coarse uh, tooth um, thread. And ensure the bar is 10 inches or 25 centimeters in length. And the maximum weight on the bar is recommended to be 11 pounds or five kilograms. And again, this is only for balancing the scope on the AM5 so it doesn't tip over. I tried it with and without the counterweight bar, it had no effect on the guiding performance or guiding accuracy. And so again, contrary to what you think and what you would expect, uh, it's only for balancing the heavy scope so they don't flip the tripod and crash into the ground. And it doesn't improve the guiding. Okay, so now that we have it all set up, um, I'm going to stop and see if there's any more questions. So David Schilling, people who ordered the AM5 in December 2021 had to wait six months. If I order now, uh, how will I also have to wait six months or are deliveries speeding up now? So... Unfortunately, it's hard to predict how the supply is. I mean, there's global shortages. I'm hoping that um, with everything opening back up and uh, people going about their lives, that things are going to start picking up again, but it's unpredictable. I know there's several people, there's been orders shipping out in June, and uh, hopefully there's more to come in July, August, September. And I hope that the wait isn't an additional six months because I really want to see these mounts getting out in the hands of customers and out and uh, using. Uh, because I, I admit for the last six months, it's been very boring for me uh, testing this mount out. I mean, it's been fun, but it's been boring because I like to talk to people about it and uh, people would accuse me of showing off or bragging about it when actually uh, Simon and I are out, out there testing the new features, trying to get the drivers up to speed and finding different bugs with it, which they all seem to be worked out now because I use this, uh, my test version nightly, every clear night I'm uh, bringing it out in my backyard and imaging. Um, so I just wanna see it in the hands of the customers now. Um, Lee, the EQ6Rs had a problem with the peer extensions allowing some flex side to side. No matter how tight you got them, they still had some movement. This setup seems to use the same principle. So Lee, I have not used this tri peer adapter yet. Uh, if it clears up, I'm gonna use it tonight for the first time. Um, it's been boxed up and I just uh, took it out for the show tonight. Uh, but I have been using the solid peer adapter. And the solid peer adapter uses three bolts, uh, kind of snaps the two sections together and then it goes on. So it is a solid adapter. And there has been no flex with this because I use this with my larger and longer refractors and um, they're, my polar alignments maintain the entire night with that. All right, Tim Martin's asking about ASCOM. Yes, it's supported. Uh, we have ASCOM drivers out there. Um, I actually saw one of the new customers who received their AM5 out using it with Nina. Uh, so that's very encouraging. And then Francois, hi TJ, how easy is it to replace the saddle if I want to use a third party one? Uh, there's really, I don't know if you can see right here, there's four bolts. So these four bolts will remove uh, the saddle. Um, my question to you would be, why do you want to uh, swap out the saddle? Uh, I find this saddle to be very lightweight. It matches the mount and um, it's actually uh, very nice to use smooth bolts. There's nylon washers on the side here. Uh, so I find it to be high quality and uh, what you would see with these aftermarket adapters that are out there. 
So kudos to ZWO for designing such a nice mount and saddle. And so ZWO says the deliveries are speeding up now, so you don't have to wait long, which is excellent news. So go ahead, get your orders in, and uh, hopefully ZWO gets them out to you quickly so we can have some fun with these AM5 mounts. So Jason Cousins, comparing the EQ6R versus the AM5 Pro versus Con. So before... I was using the AM5. I was using a Celestron mount. I have. I was their Celestron tester with the AVX, the CGEM, CGEM DX, and I was very. Uh, I love my Celestron mounts. I got the uh, Ioptron SEM70, and um, I've. It's in my pod, uh, my Sky my Skyshed pod. Um, but my preferred mount is this um, Harmonic Drive Strain Wave Drive AM5 mount. I love it. It's portable. Uh, it guides very nicely, and it's a lot of fun to use with the ASI Air app. I, I really like it, and I'll show you once I set up the ASI Air on it, because all the Wi-Fi is right through the hand controller, so I don't need a USB cable going to the mount from the ASI Air. So comparing the EQ6R to the AM5, uh, you got to remember the EQ6R will have lower periodic error than the AM5. However, the AM5 is not going to have any backlash, and it's lighter. There's no counterweight, so you don't have to worry about balancing like you would have to do with the EQ6R. And Pete Becker, is there a way to star align the mount for visual go-to use like the other brands without using the ASI Air and a camera? And the answer to that is yes. So with the AM5 mount app, which I'm going to show you, uh, shortly, I'll show you how to align. Basically, you point the mount to the north. Um, you just basically um, tell it to go to an object, and then you can manually slew to that object and then go to align, and it will align the mount on that, that target. And then Jason Cousins, will this work with the ASI, ASI Air Plus? VA Pro. So this will work with both the ASI Air original version, the Plus version, and the Pro version. So it'll work with all three. And Lee Seegers, I can tell you an EQ6R is very heavy. I sold mine as it became too much to deal with every night. I'm looking at this as a replacement as it's much lighter. And Lee, you're absolutely right. I'm right-handed. And look at this. I can lift it right up with my left hand. I can do this all night long. And then with my right hand, it's even easier. So it's incredibly lightweight. And Rolando, this is a good question. Is a counterweight needed when using an 8-inch Edge HD? And I would say it depends on the tripod you're using. If you're using the, uh, the uh, carbon fiber tripod, I would always recommend it just so if you're extreme on the east or west meridian, you don't have to worry about it uh, moving around or tipping over or somebody bumping it and then sending it over on its end. So Andrew Hayes, I saw indie drivers have been released, so we'll work with K-Stars, et cetera, now too. And you are, you are correct. You are correct on that. And Peter Dieterlein, have you experimented using a side-by-side -side system? Uh, DSLR camera lens on one side and a small uh, wide field refractor on the other. And no, I have not tried that. Uh, I am going to be looking into that because I do have a side-by-side -side solar scope. I have a 60 millimeter uh, Lunt LS60 hydrogen alpha scope, and then I also have an 80 millimeter uh, Lunt engineering refractor that I use for my uh, calcium K filter. So I definitely would like to see if I can do side-by-side. -side. And then Prashanto, why the inner sides are not straight on the top of the saddle? 
what do you see that isn't straight? It may be, it may not appear to be straight because I'm on uneven ground. Uh, but let me try to get this as level as I can. But they are straight. If I look down it and I look at the level here, uh, it goes straight down to the ground. And I'll actually even line it up with the tripod leg, which will be easier to see as well. Yeah, yeah, so it's straight. The saddle is straight on the this mount. And then Laura is asking, do you recommend any particular guide camera? I presume being harmonic, it'll need to work with one for multi-star star fast 0.5 arc seconds. I know some rainbow users had success guiding an IR. So Laura, I use on my Starfield Optics Gear 80, uh, I on this scope, I use um, a ASI 462 MC OSC guide camera on that with a 60 millimeter guide scope at a focal length of 240 millimeters. On my Celestron nine and a quarter, I was using a, an ASI 174 mm with the off axis guider, and uh, I was able to use one second exposures on that. Uh, but for obviously with the 60 millimeter guide scope, I use uh, the half a second exposure on that. And Kurt, this is a good question too. Do we need to download the AM5 app if we're using the ASIR Plus? So I would recommend downloading the AM5 app just for the purpose of updating the mount firmware and the hand controller firmware. And I'll show you uh, how we, we do that uh, momentarily. Okay, and then back to Prashanto. No, actually was asking the inner sides are not a straight line, but middle portion, our sides are depressed a bit. Inner sides are not straight line, but the middle portion, both sides, inner sides. I'm not sure what you're saying by that, but here's, go ahead and take, take a picture or screenshot of this, and then I'll mark it up and show me what you mean by that. Uh, so I can try to get an answer for you on that question. Because uh, it, it does look straight and fine to me. Um, I don't know if you're meaning about these recessed spots, and that's just where the, um, the the dovetail bar goes to cinch onto it. Okay, so Lee's asking, let us know more about the mount via wireless with the ASI Air in the system. I've read it can be controlled through the air, but no explanation of how the connections are made wirelessly. And Lee, you're in luck because that's exactly how I use this mount every time. So I'll walk you right through, uh, right through setting this up, and it's so simple to do. And Bob says, I think it's the camera angle. Marvin, is this recorded so we can watch if we miss the first part? Yes, I'm recording this. It's going to be posted on the ZWO YouTube channel and the Facebook page, uh, so you can watch the whole version of this. And then Tariq, I asked about controlling the ASI Air, so I'm waiting that. Okay, yep, so I'll show you how to control it with the, uh, with the AM, the ASI uh, mount app. You can also control it with a PC. Tonight, I'm not gonna get into that, um, but I'll show you how to use it in the ASI mount app and the ASI Air. Okay. All right. Having that done, let's move on to the next portion.
Okay. And just bear with me for a minute. I'm going back on to get my photographs back in line because I stopped for a little bit. It's paused for me. Okay, so now that the mount's installed on the tripod and the tri -pier, let's look at the altitude and azimuth adjustments on the mount. So you'll notice there are uh, tension uh, levers on the side. This is what basically loosens up to allow the altitude adjustments. And you can see I can adjust it, the altitude fairly simple with uh, just one finger, and it's very smooth and precise. The nice thing about the lever, some people say, oh, you're going to get your cable snagged on the lever. You just have to be strategic about it um, so it doesn't get snagged. And also having the lever like this, you don't need a wrench or a tool like some other companies out in the field that you could lose the wrench, the Allen wrench uh, on the ground. And speaking of that, I was just reaching in my pocket to see uh, where my Allen wrench was. And so there are two uh, gear adjustments with the altitude um, because obviously uh, they're for different latitudes. The AM5 allows for latitudes from zero degrees to 90 degrees. And the first gear range allows a latitude range of zero to 60 degrees. And the second gear allows a latitude range of 45 to 90 degrees. So to switch to gear two, while in gear one, we want to loosen the latitude tension grips, which are these uh, black levers on the side. And then now that they're loose, we're going to see if I can get a better camera angle for you. So on the side, you'll see a hex lock screw. So you want to loosen that and loosen the other side. And then you can see it slides pretty easily. So for my latitude, I'm at 45 degrees north. Uh, so I'm going to go to the second gear. And I'm going to tighten that, tighten the hex lock down. And once it's locked down, now I can adjust the altitude lever and see how easy that turns and spins. And so there's a latitude scale on the side. I'm gonna bring that right to 44 degrees. And look at that go, it goes just like butter. Okay. So now I'm gonna tighten down the sides here. And now we're all stable, we're tightened, and uh, we're ready to go. So you can see there's also some altitude or the elevate uh, the alt azimuth, the azimuth knobs, which are on the side. So I'm going to, these are the locks on the side. So you can lock it down and then it's not going to move or you unlock it. And unlock is flush with it. To lock it, you pull that out and it'll stick out a bit and then it's not going to go anywhere so now the next step what i'm going to do is plug in my hand controller and the other benefit of using the uh, azimuth knobs on this mount there's no uh there's no real metal on metal that's uh, going to be jumping around. With some other mounts that I use, 
I hate when I'm trying to polar align and I adjust it a little bit and then the whole, the azimuth jumps. That doesn't happen with the AM5. It's nice and smooth and it slides very nicely. So I said the next step is to plug in the hand controller to the mount. And you can either use the uh, hand controller or you can use the USB 2 cable. If you're using the USB 2 cable, you really don't even need to use the uh, hand controller. So you could just leave the hand controller unplugged. But I like connecting to the Wi-Fi on the hand controller. So I'm going to plug in the hand controller. The nice thing about this tripe here, there's little, the hooks here, you can hook the hand controller right to the side of it. And here you go. Here's the hand controller. I put one on the screen so you can uh, see it on there, just so you can see what I'm talking about. And um, this, like I said, this is my preferred method to connect the ASI Air to the uh, AM5 is through the Wi-Fi on the hand controller. And as you can see, it's not a conventional hand controller you're used to seeing on some of the other mounts. Um, it's actually, it fits nicely in your hand and it's small and it, there's a rocker joystick like a video game controller, which allows simple and easy manual slews. I find this perfect for visual viewing, solar imaging, lunar, planetary imaging. And if you press down on the rocker, the slew speed will toggle between fast and slow. The light at the top of the controller will indicate uh, which mode is being used. If the light is on, the fast slew speed is on. If the light is off, then obviously the slow slew speed is on. The low speed will slew the mount 1, 2, 4, or 8x, while the high speed will slew the mount 20 to uh, 1440x. Uh, and there's a button labeled T on the hand controller, which will start and uh, stop the tracking. The button below uh, has a round arrow. This is a very convenient button. This is the cancel button. So if you see um, the, the mount is slewing how you don't want it to, or you're trying to stop it from going to an object that you were slewing to, you can press that and stop the, the slew. You can also press and hold it for three seconds and it'll return to the zero position or to the home position. And the AM5 is capable of being an equatorial mount or an alt azimuth uh, mount. And let me just take that off. The uh, default mode on this is equatorial mode. So when equatorial mode is on, uh, you'll have a uh, red light indicator on the, the, on the mount. And when, um, when the alt azimuth mode is on, it'll show a green. Uh, and I have a little photograph of that that shows. So you can see the arrow, it's pointing to the status light. So when that's red, you're in uh, equatorial mode. When it's uh, green, you're in alt azimuth mode. And when you go to alt azimuth mode, if you're using it for visual without a polar alignment, all you do is loosen up the uh, side, the, um, you loosen up those altitude uh, knobs and you bring it back to 90 degrees. So once it's at 90 degrees and you switch it to alt azimuth mode, you're in alt azimuth mode. It's very simple to do and you can go about your day or your night. So now that everything is sturdy and stable, <clears throat> let's talk about the power. Actually, before I get into power, let me just pause here and I'm gonna take a look and see if there's any more questions. I wanna to try to stay up on the questions. So Michael Marinic, does tightening sometimes move the out or as? So I am, so you saw how easy it was, so I'm gonna loosen it a little bit. So when I'm polar aligning the, the altitude, I'll make slight adjustments. And then I keep this not super loose, but just on the edge. So when I do go to tighten it, it's a very gentle tight tightening. And I have the weight in the tripod uh, sling, so it will not uh, knock the mount over of side or uh, affect the altitude. And then same thing with the uh, azimuth. I'll leave it just on the edge here. 
I'll make my slight adjustments and then I'll tighten it down uh, really easily. So it doesn't uh, get into that and it doesn't knock it out of polar alignment. And then Lee, we all know the pains of doing polar alignment in the air with various vendors mounts. How's the response from moving the adjustments when doing a polar alignment? And Lee, it is very smooth. Um, let me just loosen this again. And you can see, I don't have any weight in the tripod, so I'm just holding it with my hand. And you can see it's very simple. I could use my pinky and it's very responsive. And you'll, you just make slight adjustments and you'll see the change in the polar alignment uh, feature in the ASI Air. And same thing with the uh, azimuth. Once it's unlocked, it's very, you can see it's, let me turn them out a little bit more. You can see it's very easy and fine to adjust just with a little bit of movement. And you can see, I'll move it a little bit closer. You can see there's, there is a post for the azimuth, but it's not like other manufacturers where you have a square design. It's uh, nice and rounded. So it's very effective with adjustments. And Lee's asking, Wait, so the Wi-Fi is built into the hand controller, not the mount itself? And yes, you are correct. The Wi-Fi is built into the hand controller. And then Lee says, that kind of sucks to be honest. It would be much better to have it in the mount and not a device that has to hang there. And Lee, the way this mount is designed, the AM5, you're only rotating uh, on one axis. So when it rotates, you're not really moving to get it tangled with anything so it really doesn't bother me and uh, i think you get better wi-fi connection with it in the hand controller so you don't have the interference from the electronics or the mo the gears or uh any other types of uh, signal so it keeps it nice and clean and i've never had an issue connecting to the wi-fi in the hand controller it's very quick reliable and responsive And Francois says, it doesn't suck because the mount is made of metal and the hand controller is made of plastic, which won't affect the Wi-Fi signal range. And Francois, you're exactly correct. Uh, it's kind of the same case with the original ASI Air in the plastic Raspberry Pi box uh, before it went to the Pro. You, I mean, you all saw how it diminished the Wi-Fi range. Uh, so this, having it in the plastic case, I get very nice signal and uh, connectivity. Even when I don't have the ASI Air and I'm using the ASI mount on my tablet, I can walk a great distance and still stay connected to uh, the hand controller. So you're exactly right. And Andrew, so is the, the hand controller also a Wi-Fi antenna as well with that long lead? Um, I think everything is internal built into the hand controller. Um, so, but it is uh, nice to have the Wi-Fi signal coming from this. All right, so those are all the questions there. Let's move on to the next section. So powering the mount. The AM5 requires a minimum 12 volt to three amp power supply to power the mount. If you notice, there's also a five amp output on the side of the mount. So if you're gonna use this five amp output, you're gonna to wanna to use a larger power supply, like a 12 volt, five amp uh, to a 10 amp, 12 volt, 10 amp power supply to be able to power, like say the ASI Air off the side of the mount. Uh, one thing, even though it is uh, capable of the three amps to, for power supply, uh, I would recommend powering the mount separately and not powering the, the mount through the ASI Air. Uh, the power consumption of the mount is 12 volts by uh, 0 0.4 amps on standby, 0 0.6 amps on tracking, and 1.5 amps on the go-to slews. All right, so now that the mount's set up, I'm going to mount the Starfield Optics uh, Gear 80 scope, and I'm also going to put the ASI Air Plus back on it so you can see that going on. So as I mentioned earlier, when I'm putting the mount on the, the scope, I'll use a wooden dowel and I'll figure out where the center of gravity is. And you don't have to do this. 
this is just something I do out of good practice. And when I do that, I know that the center of balance is around where the EAF focuser is. So now I'm going to put that EAF focuser right in the center of that saddle. So it's since it's centered, I'm going to tighten it right down. And you can see it does not mar my dovetail bar. It takes really good care of the bar, doesn't mark it up. I'm just going to tighten it, make sure it's all tight. And I'm just lowering the tripod a little bit so you can see it a little better. There we go. All right, so now that we have the Gear 80 on the, the AM5, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the ASIR Plus back on it. And then I'm going to put my uh, dew heaters. My dew heaters I always put in the port two on the ASI Air's DC output. And then I have my camera, which I put on camera uh, output one. There you go. You can see it a little better now. And then I have uh, the camera USB. I'm going to put that in the USB 3 so I get the high speeds and the fast transfer speeds. And then I have my 2-inch EFW going right to the back of the camera. And I also have the power cable. So now I have the EAF on the side. I'm going to put that right into a USB 2 port. And then I have my 462 MC camera. I'm going to also put that right into the USB 2 port. And then I have one open USB 3 port, which even though there's an EMMC on this that saves it really fast, I like to use a USB 3 thumb drive. Uh, so I'll put the USB thumb drive 3 thumb drive right in. And the only real reason, the only time I use the US, the EMMC is when I'm planetary imaging or solar imaging. So I get the faster uh, and higher frame rate. All right, so as you can see, I have the Gear 80 mounted. Uh, it's from Starfield Optics. It's 80 millimeter uh, APO refractor. It's a lightweight. It's a great grab and go on this AM5 setup. I absolutely love this setup. And uh, this is the first time having this production version out. Usually it's on my test AM5 test version. Uh, so I can't wait to get it out. And uh, it looks like some overcast, so it's not clear yet, but I'm hoping after midnight it'll clear up. Uh, so I leave this scope set up on the AM5 all the time. Uh, in between uh, sessions, it uh, I bring it inside and it stays set up. I'm not worried about uh, it falling over, tipping, or anything just because I'm very conscious about the uh, weights and about uh, uh, the load on it. So let me just show you a picture of uh, the setup there. So here's the Gear 80 set up in the backyard before night of imaging. And then some of the images I've got off this, uh, the elephant trunk. 
And that's with the 2600 mm camera. And then uh, North American with the uh, ASI 533 mm. And then M101 with the um, ASI 533 mm. Okay. And then here's the Here's my C9.25, and you can notice I have it on the AVX tripod just for more uh, stability. And I also am using a OAG on that. And at 16, 1,645 millimeters, here's a nice high focal length shot, and you can see the stars are nice and round on that as well. Okay. So, and I just want to add too that the nine and a quarter performed just as well on the AM5 as it did with my ger large German equatorial mount that's in my sky shed pod. And it's the AM5 is a lot more portable to use and it's easier to use. And I didn't have to worry about the balance like I do on my larger uh, German equatorial mount. And like I said before, all the balance is, isn't required. I still like to practice the best I can and balance it. Um, since there's no clutch release on the AM5, I use the dowel to find the center of gravity and then place it in the center of the saddle. And having that said, before we move on to the ASI ma uh, mount app, let's see if there's any more questions. And Tariq says, I assume the hand controller is included uh, with the mount and it's not a uh, order separately. And you're correct. It's included with the mount and uh, it's, it fits right in the, the uh, nylon case that's included. And Mike asks, does the Wi-Fi on the hand controller work in station mode? Uh, yes, it does. And that's how I actually connect to uh, the ASI airs through station mode. Uh, that way you still have that free Wi-Fi signal. And then Tariq, don't forget to tell us about the temp that this mount can work. I have extremely hot weather here and at night it is very warm. And if for solar daylight, it can go higher than 40 degrees Celsius and humidity that leave dew inside maybe. Um, and I think ZWO, so I've had the mount below the recommended temperature. I haven't had it above the recommended temperature because it doesn't get that hot here. Uh, and I haven't had any issues. Maybe ZWO can answer that as far as the higher temperature range. Um, hi, Tom. Thanks for joining us. And Francois says, notice that he doesn't need to balance the scope since it's drain wave gear mount. And yes, you are correct on that. And Steve says, amazing images, TJ. Thank you very much. And amazing star colors. And I didn't know this, Starfield Optics also makes a portable pier that's compatible with the AM5. That's good to know as well. And Pete asked, will you be able to demonstrate the power uh, failure protection feature? By the way, you're doing a stellar job with this. Thanks a lot, Pete. And that's actually uh, after we do the ASI mount app, that's my uh, one of my tests that I do. I'll pull the power in mid slew uh, so you can see the braking. And any luck testing this with a C11 and I know ZWO had a C11 on it. I don't have access to a C11, so I haven't tested it. The largest I've tested was my C9 and a quarter. And can you connect the ASI Air with the mount five amp side port? Thanks. Yes, you can, Harold. Uh, just keep in mind your output. If you're running your cooled cameras off the ASI Air, you're gonna wanna supply it with enough, uh, enough amperage.
And Austin asks, all upweight with guider cameras, ASI Air, et cetera. So my Edge HD nine and a quarter with the reducer, because the reducer is extremely heavy on it. I weighed it and it with the dew shield, because if you notice, I was using a dew shield on uh, the top there. And there you go, just so you can see it. And that large reducer, it weighed in at 36 pounds. And that's just an approximate weight because uh, it's so heavy. So I just jumped on the scale and then jumped on the scale, picked up the scope, jumped on the scale again, and just took the difference in weight. So it's not that scientific for the measuring or for the weighing. Uh, Steve, have you ever tried tracking and imaging the ISS? The only time I've tracked and imaged the ISS was during a solar transit. However, I want to try and uh, see what I can do. Uh, with the new gear and see what we can do. And Rolando, can we just buy the AM5 mount only? I guess it will fit my do-it-yourself peer. And yes, you can go on in the ZWO website, which the link is above uh, this, and you'll see a link right to the AM5 mount, and you can buy just the mount only. And there's my backup. ZWO says the recommended operating temperature is from negative 15 degrees Celsius to 40 degrees Celsius. But we can have some tests to see if we break the limitation. And I've been known to ZWO to break the rules and the laws. So I usually image in the extreme cold with it. And I really pushed this AM5 mount this past winter in the, the uh, sub-zero, sub-20 degree temperatures. I think the coldest I had it was negative 25 degrees in, the, in December. And Greg says, I bought the mount. I'll use it with my William Optics 1000 millimeter mortar pier. That'll be a great setup. Uh, you'll love that. And Tariq says, 40 degrees isn't a good idea for me if I want to use an extreme summer sometimes. How warm do you get, Tariq, where you are? How hot? Okay, so that's all done. I'm going to go back to the video, and I'll collect some more questions in a little bit. Uh, so we're going to move on. And one, I just want to hit on this real quick. One of the main questions I am often asked is, does the AM5 support ASCOM? Yes, it does. It supports ASCOM, Indy, and it's also compatible with the LX200 uh, command set. All right, so now let's look at the mobile ASI mount app. So I'm going to pull this up on the screen. And I'm just going to put my 11-pound counterweight. Remember, I'm very conscious about the weight, so I'm going to put that in the sling just to add some extra support. So now you can already see how much that increased the stability on the mount. And I'm going to bring the power cable over. So the power, I'm going to apply my uh, 12 volt, 5 amp uh, power supply to the ASI or to the AM5 mount. And I'm going to power it right on. Okay, and I don't know if you heard that tone. The tone means that the AM5 is powered on. All right, so the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to go into uh, my Wi-Fi settings, and I'm going to connect to the AM5, AMH signal, which is the mount. And the passcode is 12345678. Type that in, and now we're connected. And now I'm going to wait for it spinning around. It's connected. And now I'm going to go, you can see the ASI uh, mount app. 
I'm going to go into the mount app. And here we go. So going into the ASI mount app, you can see default, it's on Polaris. The blue uh, box is what the scope is pointed at right now. And it's all it's a planetarium at my fingertips. So I can slew around the sky. And there's the Chinese uh, skyline there, beautiful China. And good morning to China. And here's Andromeda. So now you can see the red box is what I'm looking at. So I'm going to go up to the search app. You see the uh, hourglass up top. I can go through the messier objects. There's also a search button. You see the magnifying glass on the upper right corner. You can press on that, and I can enter an object number. So I'll type in uh, M33, and M33 brings up Triangulum. Now you see the go to and the center. If I click go to, it's going to go to Triangulum. If I hit center, it's just going to center it in the app without telling the uh, scope to go to or the mount to go to uh, Triangulum. So now there's categories in the ASI mount, uh, comets, the NGC objects. Comets are really cool uh, because you're able to, they update the database and you're able to see them. And there's numerous comets. It shows uh, when they're high in the sky for you. So you can keep track of uh, what's in there. So now going down to the FOV, target FOV settings. I can choose, so I have my 2600 camera, you can choose what camera you're using. And you don't have to be connected to the scope to access this. You can access the planetarium without being connected to the mount. And so you can see I can scroll through planetary guide cameras and even a custom camera. You can customize and uh, get your pixels and your uh, sensor size down. So I'll set, go back to 2600. And you can see my sensor width, height, and you change the scope focal length, and it'll give you your field of view. So now on the AM5 settings, you can see there's tracking. You have side reel, solar, and lunar mode. And you can also see below that you have go to home position. If I want to go to home, I just press start, which it's already at home. It's already at Polaris. I haven't slewed yet. And you have mount mode and the AM5 hand controller managed system. That's where... Uh, you update the um, you update the hand controller and the uh, mount. So now I'm just going to click on the AM5, uh, the mount mode, and this will show you the um, how it, and it gives you directions on how to uh, set it to the the alt azimuth mode, and it's a nice little description there. Then I can go back, I'm gonna click on the updater. Just takes a minute to load. And now this is the hand controller management. So you can see it gives you the Wi-Fi, the info, um, hand controller info. In the center, there's firmware. This is where you would update the firmware. And this is why I would recommend having this AM uh, ASI mount app just so you can catch the updates as EWO releases them. So now going back into the uh, ASI mount, um, you can see there's serial number version. And then we're going to go into the app settings. This is where you have the meridian, celestial equator, equatorial coordinates. I just turned them on. So let's take a look at what that does. And you can see now I have the equatorial coordinates in the sky. You can also turn off the skyline if you don't want the skyline in there. And you turn off the coordinates. So that's how I have it. Uh, the scope's still pointed at Polaris, the blue uh, box. So now I'm going to, you can see at the bottom, there's a go to object. So I'm going to go to M31 Andromeda. And say I wanted a custom frame, which I'm going to show you. I'll I'll just go off the target a little bit. So I'll go over to, let's see. There's a good one. So I'll go over to North America and Pelican. I want to frame them cent, uh, centered. So now instead of go, go to the object, I'm going to go go cross. So go cross, see the cross in the center? 
now that's going to send the scope to center in the center of North America and Pelican. So now when I'm imaging, or even if I'm doing visual, and see the align button. So if you're, if say you go to um, Arcturus and Arcturus is off, I'll move it over with the red box and then I'll center it and then I'll click align and that will tell the mount where uh, Arcturus is and it'll align it to it. So another cool feature is the compass. So say I'm out in the back with my son looking at the sky, looking at constellations. I click that compass in the upper right. And now anywhere I tilt my phone is it's going to tell me what I'm looking at. And this is a free app. It's free for anybody to download and use. So it's and it doesn't have to be even be connected to the AM5 uh, to use this feature. Okay, so now I'm telling it to go to home position. So I went into the uh, AM5 settings and I clicked start and it's sending my uh, mount to home. And then once I'm at home, I'm gonna slew, I'm gonna go back to the camera view for you. All right, so this is gonna be the power test to show you. So I'm gonna use the hand controller and I'm gonna, remember, I'm gonna hold it down the, the rocker switch. The red light's gonna come on, so now I'm in fast mode. So, so let me put my, I'm using Bluetooth speakers in my ears. So I'm gonna put my ear right up close to it and you can barely even hear it, it's very quiet. So I'm gonna almost go to Zenith for you. And then I'm going to tell it to go home and I'm going to pull the power. So to go home, remember that uh, reset button, the bottom button on the hand controller. I'm going to hold that down. Three seconds. And there we go. So now it's going home. Give it a little bit more and pull the power. And it stops right there. Dead in its tracks. So we, the braking works fine and there's uh, no issues with it. And I'll even rock it a little bit and you can see it's totally stable. The brake's locked and engaged and it's not going anywhere. So now I'm gonna apply the power back and the mount is able to tell where home position is. So once I power it back on, I'm gonna push the home, the uh, go to home button again for three seconds, the reset button. And then we'll go back to the zero position and home position. There you go. And, and real quick, one more time for that test, I'm gonna rock, bring it to the other side of the meridian. And that's the cool thing about this, the rocker switch, I can just basically control it and it's so easy to control, just like a little uh, gaming system controller. So now I'm gonna hit the go to home button again. One more power failure test. So we're in the middle of a slew, going, going, going. Oh, lost the power, still there. And look, I'm rocking it pretty good. It's solid, it's not going anywhere. I trust this mount 100%. Uh, that's the nice thing um, about this mount, it's been, developed, designed, and by ZWO. ZWO designed the mount, they made the mount. They also made the ASI Air, they designed the ASI Air. They work flawlessly together. I'm gonna to apply the power back together. You hear the beep at powering back on. I'm gonna push that go to home button again. Three second hold, and now it's going back to the home position. All right, so now let me pause here. I'm gonna see if there's any uh, more questions or uh, if there's any uh, questions about the ASI mount uh, app. And so just to follow up on that, just the RA axis has braking 
the DC axis does not need the braking. And you can see uh, it worked flawlessly on that power failure test. So in conclusion, the ASI mount can be used without connection to the AM5 as a Sky Atlas. The app's a nice and quick way to update the mount's firmware and the hand controller firmware. That's one of the big things with my other mounts uh, that I hated was bringing my computer out, trying to update the firmware, trying to get an internet connection. Uh, but with this, you can just update it right through the app. Uh, so you don't need a computer to do this. And how about any questions about ASI mount or uh, any other questions I can uh, ask before we, or answer before we move on to the ASI air? And this is my favorite part coming up. And uh, I can't see, I have a bunch of lights here in front of me, uh, but I can't really tell if it's clear or not, but I'll see. So let's go to the questions. Tariq says, in summer, it goes up to 45 to 50 degrees daytime, even if 36 to 40 degrees with humidity, it increases that even more. And is ZWO going to offer a PS for this mount, or will it need to be third-party only? Oh, okay, so power supply, you're asking. Um, they, they offer that 12-volt, 5-amp power supply for the cameras. You can actually use that uh, for the, the mount as well. And I actually, I, I prefer the ZWO, and this isn't a sales pitch. I prefer the ZWO 12-volt, 5-amp power supply uh, because it's usually better than what I order off Amazon. And I've received several power supplies that were dead on arrival. So since that, I just order the ZWO power supplies. And Francois, yes, I use the AVX tripod for more stability, um, and that's just a personal preference. I've seen people, and I've seen tests uh, over in uh, China with the carbon fiber tripod and a weight in the weight sling. Uh, however, it's just, just my personal preference because I don't want my mount to crash or my scope to crash over. So just that extra security for me. And Greg, he's asking, is it preferred to power the air off the AM5, uh, the AM5 off the air, or power them separately? And Greg, I power them separately. That's my preferred method. Um, the only time I will, and this is, like I said, this is a new mount uh, to me, and it has that 5 amp. My test mount didn't have it before the 12 volt uh, 5 amp output. However, with the ASI Air and with solar imaging and planetary imaging, uh, I'll be using the uh, output to power the ASI Air just because I'm not using a cooled camera. So um, that won't be an issue at all. And Scott's asking, is the hand box required to connect the phone app to the mount? Uh, the hand control, uh, hand box, hand controller, I'm assuming is the same thing you're talking about. Uh, yes, the hand controller is required to connect the phone app to the mount. However, if you're just going out to look at the sky, you don't need the, uh, ASI, uh, the AM5 connected, uh, to use the ASI mount. And Ivan's asking, what is the difference between the home position and zero positions you mentioned? So right now, uh, home and zero positions are the same. And Vic uh, loves tracking rocket launches from 50, 80 miles away from Cape Canaveral. Is there any way at all to do this with this or any mount? So Vic, I would say because you have uh, 1,440X for the max speed, you have plenty of speed in uh, fast mode. Um, and the cool thing about it is this hand controller. Let me put the hand controller back on it just in case you missed it earlier. I love this rocker switch. This rocker switch allows me to slew the mount really easily and quickly and accurately. 
Uh, so I'm, that's why I'm looking forward to tracking ISS with this because it's almost like a video game when I'm uh, moving a, around. And Yuchi says, I want to mount my Rasa 8 on the AM5. Do you think I need a counterweight? And Yuchi, as long as you're using a stable uh, stable mount and or a carbon fiber tripod with uh, a counterweight in the bag or a stable platform, I don't see why you wouldn't be able to do that. And Ivan, is there a park position also? And the park position right now, uh, there hasn't been anything set up or developed yet, um, but I don't know if ZWO will implement that with the ASCOM driver uh, for those who are using Nina or another uh, imaging software. Okay. All right, so we did the power failure check where I pulled the power. And now how about some fun with the ASIR Plus? So I have it all hooked up now. I'm just going to grab my iPad. So I'm powering on the ASI Air. And you can see I'm just using the ASI Air. And I just have to wait. The ASI Air Plus takes a, a couple, takes a little bit to start up. So I'm just waiting for the signal to connect. You'll hear that happy tone from the ASI Air Plus. There it is. And now I'm scanning, and just like that, I'm connected. Uh, so right on the main screen here, you can see uh, my latitude and longitude, if anyone wants to come visit me. I have some star parties out here in the northern Adirondacks. Uh, I'm using the AM5 mount. You can see there's different supported mounts that are available. Let's go back to the good one. There we go, AM5. Uh, my Gear 80, my Starfield Optics Gear 80 is a 385 millimeter focal length scope. And my guide scope is a 60 millimeter, 240 millimeter. I'm using a ASI 2600 mm Pro. And you can see also see I have a 462 MC camera connected, which is my uh, guide camera. I also have the EFW and the EAF connected. So now I'm going to click enter. And here's the beautiful ASI Air interface. So to connect to the mount, I'm going to go to the Wi Fi settings. And you can see here, I'm going to turn ports three and four off just because I'm not using them. Wi-Fi settings, I'm in 2.4 gigahertz, and I'm connected to the ASI Air, and uh, automatically connected to. So to connect to the Wi-Fi signal, and you can see, let me switch back to, to here. You can see all I have connected is uh, my hand controller and the power port, uh, power supply to the AM5. Uh, I'm completely wireless from the AM5 to the ASI Air. So going back into the ASI Air app, I go to station mode. You can see 
right here is the AM5 or AMH5AB1E0. That's how I'm connecting uh, through to it. Now, let me try. All right, so now I'm going to do a split screen here. And then you can see there's a controller here, which I can manually move, move the mount. And you can adjust the slew speed. And in the ASI Air, just like the ASI mount, there's a planetarium. So I'm going to zoom out on the planetarium. And the same thing. Let's go. Let's go to Vega over in the eastern sky. So we have Vega here. Uh, remember, I can go, click Go Object or I can go go cross and go cross would be where the red box is. So there's the cross there, but I'm on Vega. I'm gonna tell it to go to the object. So now we zoom out, we're gonna see that blue box going and that's the scope. Let me zoom out a little bit. I'm gonna go out and then back in. And now you can see I'm, I'm lined up there on it. So now what I would do and I still don't have clear skies. It's clouded over, so I can't uh, do a test. But that's a good uh, video for the next uh, live video. I'll do a live one going through the ASI Air. Uh, so what I would do is I would plate solve it. Let me do like a five-second exposure, which isn't going to give me anything. But it'll show you how fast the download speeds are when I'm connected like this. There you go. And that's my 2600 mm, so it's extremely fast. So now what I would do is click plate solve and it's not gonna find anything because I'm clouded over here and I have the lens cap on. Uh, but you can see it's telling me my field of view, the sensor size, and uh, I'm just gonna click cancel. But once it does plate solve it, I would click sync to mount. And then once I sync to the mount and I go back in here and tell it to go to Vega again, it would be right on right on it there we go okay so let me just go see if there's any questions on this while I have the ASI Air up, if there's anything anybody wants to see in the ASI Air app. But I mean, it's pretty straightforward. I'll go into the uh, AM5 settings here. Um, you can see, you can do the Meridian flip with the AM5. The Meridian flips are all flawless with the uh, ASI Air. You can turn go to auto center on. So when you tell it to go to a target, it will center it. You have the tracking. I've never had any tracking issues with the AM5. I know some mounts, some different companies, they have issues uh, with the ASI Air where the tracking's been turning off or turning on when it's not supposed to, but I have not had any issues whatsoever with the AM5. It's always been reliable and 100% uh, working effectively for me. And you can see and switch the side reel to solar to lunar. And then I'll do go to home again. Uh, but I'll wait on that. All right, so let me go to the questions to see if there's any more questions. Okay, so Scott says, does the hand controller joystick always navigate intuitively? 
it often it's hard to do the RA deck math when a hand controller arrow links directly to the RA or deck axis. Some mounts like the RST-135 will always allow you to navigate alt as even in equatorial mode. So I found this joystick to move, uh, to move very smooth and nicely. Um, it does, sometimes you do have to try to figure out which way is which when you're moving the joystick, but because of the rocker switch, it's actually very simple and easy to learn and to use on that. And Jim said, nice video, TJ. Really makes me want one now. And uh, this is a big tease tonight because I'm clouded out and I'm all set up. And all I have to do is throw it in the polar alignment and polar align and I'm good to go tonight. And I'm all set up out here with power, this camera, the scope. And I just wish I could get out there tonight to see how uh, this is working. I'm anxious to see how the this mount guides And then Andrew is in Melbourne, Australia, and he has friends in Burlington, Vermont. We're coming over to see them in the Eclipse in 2024. With the lower weight of the AM5, I'd be half tempted to bring it with me. Andrew, if you're coming up to Burlington, that's just on the other side of the lake from me. Uh, if you get in touch with me, and I'd, I'd love to have you over. I'm trying to get the ZWO team to come over from China for this uh, event. It'll be a great time. Maybe we could have a big party in my backyard. I know April here will be a little cold and the chances of it being cloudy. I'm on a tall, uh, I don't want to say a mountain, but I'm on a hill and uh, the weather is very fa favorable for me. Whereas over in Burlington, Burlington's always clouded out from the late clouds and the, the, um, the lake, uh, the, the moisture off the lake. So you're welcome to come on over here, Andrew. And then Mike asks, does it pull the location from the hand controller, tablet, or some sort of GPS? And I'm assuming it's pulling the GPS off the phone because I'm connected to, to the phone. And then Tom says, can you connect the AM5 to the ASI Air directly via a USB cable? And yes, you can do that. Uh, the AM5 does connect to the ASI Air with the, hand, with the USB cable. And you actually, you don't even need the hand controller if you're connecting that way. You can eliminate the hand controller and just run the ASI Air directly to the AM5 with the USB. And then Harold said, thank you for your time doing this live presentation. Question, is ZWO working on a rotator? Thanks. And to answer that, Harold, I don't know. Um, I, I know ZWO is always uh, innovating the astrophotography field. And um, let me just switch so you can see me. So ZWO is always innovating the astrophotography field, and I'm sure they're going to be having several new products come and uh, additional new products, new developments, and new game changers for the astrophotography field. So I'm sure there's going to be more uh, technology coming, more devices, rotators, uh, maybe even a, I, I would love to see a ZWO flat panel developed. Um, I, my flat panel works well, but it would be neat to have one also from ZWO. Oh, ZWO jumped in and said, we are doing that. So stay tuned. So that answers that on the rotator. There, there's stay tuned for more information on that. <laughs> I guess they're going to let the cat out of the bag on that one. Okay. So any other questions uh, on this? It's 10.16 p.m. here, Eastern Time in Northern Adirondacks. So 10.16 a.m. in China on, let's see, Sunday? All right, 
So I'm just hanging out, waiting to see if anybody has anything for me, any questions. Do you want to see anything in the ASI Air app uh, while I have it up? And we'll switch over to the ASI Air camera. There we go. ASI Air screen back up. I love this device. I love the AM5. I love the ASI Air Plus. It's a game changer for me. Uh, just to show you the ASI Air Plus, you have the EMMC, and you also, I have the USB drive in, so I can save to either uh, target. For planetary, I save to the EMMC for higher frame rates and uh, s speeds for solar imaging. And then for deep space, I save to the USB drive. Uh, so that way in the morning, I can just pull my USB uh, drive out and uh, go to town with the, editing the images. Mark Sellers says, take my money. Anything in particular look, you're looking for, Mark? Tariq says it's 6.16 a.m. here in the UAE. And William said, when using the hand controller to control the movement, is the speed determined by how far the joystick is pressed? And let me just go to show you that. So I'm going to go back to the fast mode. So I can give little bursts. Yep, so it does. It does change the speed. So how far over you are with the, the rocker switch. So if I go over slightly, I'm creeping slow with little bursts. But then if I go all the way to the right, now we're at full slew, full speed slew. And let's see, Bob Waterfield morning. Steve, you're already anxiously waiting and now you want one even more. And it's well worth the wait. I absolutely love this mount. I love the tri-pier here. I love this whole setup. It's solid, it's rugged. It's gonna do a lot of good for me. So I need a clear sky for the all sky alignment to show that. Um, in my next video, I'll do one with the ASI air and with the lining for the sky like that. So on that note, it's uh, I've been on for two hours, 26 minutes. I'm getting a little bit of a light sprinkle here in the northern Adirondacks, a little passing shower, nothing to dust off. It's just spitting a little bit. Um, but let me see if there's any more questions. I don't mind sitting out here. The scope's all covered up. The gear's all protected. A little moisture is not going to hurt anything. Let's see. So, Mark, I'm going to do another video for you. I said this uh, just a minute ago, but I'll, I'll be back on live. Um, I actually, I built a studio here and I got some software, some technology to do some more videos, maybe even throw, throw together some image processing, uh, tutorials, uh, for everybody, uh, free of charge for all of our, um, for all of our ZWO users. Uh, cause obviously I'm in a backyard imager, just like you all are. I'd like to have fun, like the image, and I like to help you all out as well. And Mike Gibbs, anything unique, different with the AM5 on the ASI Air Plus? Uh, unique and different with the AM5 on the ASI Air Plus. I can say the ASI Air Plus and the ASI Air Pro and the original ASI Air all work flawlessly with the AM5 mount. It's a lot of fun to use and you don't have to worry about uh, a lot of the bugs that other mount issues have, uh, mount companies have just because ZWO developed the AM5 and they developed the ASI Air, so they work hand in hand together. And the last uh, comment of the night tonight, 
Excellent job, TJ. ZWO Star Party would be a sales bonanza. And I would actually love to have a star party. So if anybody, have, maybe in the future, we can put together a star party. There's lots of dark places, dark areas here in the northern Adirondacks. And I'd love to host people. I'd love to have get together with you all and do some imaging. Um, so maybe in the future, we'll all get together and maybe bring uh, ZW, ZWO China over. So for backyard permanent observatory type setup, will it make sense to have an AM5 over, say, as EQ6R or Ioptron mounts? Uh, the, I think in my personal opinion, and this is just my personal opinion, I think a backyard permanent observatory, um, I mean, you're. it's hard to say because obviously I love the AM5, but if I'm, if I'm mounted on a pier in an observatory, and I have the count, room for counterweights, I have the room for balance, uh, and it's a heavier duty, heavier scope, I would go for a German equatorial mount. However, for portability, this is a game changer. If I'm throwing this in my hiking backpack, I would uh, just go right out into the woods and up into the mountains with the AM5. So a dome or a, uh, a roll-off uh, shed, I would recommend probably a a German equatorial mount with a higher, uh, heavier scope. But for the smaller grab and go setup, I would use the AM5 any day. All right. Thank you, Ron. And thank you, Eric. All right. So on that note, it's two hours, 30 minutes, and I'm going to sign off. So everybody take care, be safe, have a good day, good evening, good morning, uh, and I'll see you out there under the dark skies. Good night.